Hello everyone and welcome back. We are kicking off day two of theCUBE's live coverage of Google Cloud Next. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. John, this is wall-to-wall -wall coverage, yeah. Gen AI all the time. Yeah, it's a great show, it's, it's an industry uh, event in the sense that the demand for Gen AI infrastructure is so high and the user experiences have changed with, with the Gen AI wave with, with ChatGPT and now you've got user experiences and the underlying infrastructure has to deliver the performance so everyone in the enterprise is actually running really hard to retool, reset, rethink and re-architect the engineering behind how to scale up these platforms to serve the demand and of course the developer community is going crazy there. They've got a huge appetite uh, for coding, open source and again that's being impacted by AI. So this next segment really hits really the enterprise uh, core product demand for scalable, scalable enterprise infrastructure. So I was going to say a perfect great. segue to our next yeah, guest. I, I would like to welcome Sashima Shigatoshi. He is the Chief Technology Officer at Digital Systems and, and Service Division at Hitachi. Welcome. Yo, thank you. And Srinivas Shankar, he is the Chief Business Officer and Head of Global Industries at Global Logic. Welcome both of you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Delighted to be here. Srini, I want to start with you. I want you to tell our viewers a little bit about Global Logic and also, and why you're here on the show. Look, um, let me start with a little bit about Global Logic, and I'm sure Samir Simasan will cover the Hitachi Group as well. We're, Global Logic is a fully owned subsidiary of the Hitachi Group. We engineer intelligent products, platforms, and services for our clients in ways that have meaningful and relevant, relevant positive impact for society on the planet. And we take a tremendous amount of pride in doing that by solving complex engineering challenges. That's essentially who we are. We're about 30,000 people globally. Look, the reason why we're here is we're really excited to talk about how Global Logic and Hitachi are collaborating to create a enterprise grade scalable generative AI platform that will be used broadly by the Hitachi group of companies. We'll talk a little bit about the approach, uh, what purpose it serves, and what's the importance and relevance of Google Cloud in that purpose. Great, we want to dig into all of that, but Sashima, why don't you start with a bit of an overview about the Hitachi Group. Okay, and, um, this year we are honored to celebrate the 150th anniversary of birth of Namihei Odaira, the esteemed founder of Hitachi. He grew our organization to be a global conglomerate now, powering good through social innovation to realize the sustainable society. Since our founding over a century ago, Hitachi has been committing to its corporate philosophy to contribute society and has been created various innovations. The, through the extensive collaboration with a wide range of customers, Hitachi has been accumulated technical and knowledge advances in IT, OT, operational technology, and product. This is our uniqueness. So these capabilities serve as a key to address the customer's issues and the societal issues through the, what we call the Lumada solution, that means illuminating data to create barriers. So the Gen AI is also an important technology for Lumada and the social innovation. For example, as you know, the working age population is a critical societal issue for most of the advanced country is facing or will be facing. So Gen AI is expected to improve the productivity of our intellectual labors. So the, um, that could be a key driver for our customers' businesses and the societies. And the global logic plays a pivotal role as an accelerator of Hitachi Group, which harness the potential of Gen AIs. Now, by combining the mutual strength of Hitachi Group, cultivated in the multiple domains in the mission critical fields, and the global logic, which has the capability of implementing the advanced technologies, will promote the safe and the secure use of the Gen AI for our customers and the societies. That's a great vision, and I love, the, I love that statement because yesterday one of the big highlights from the mm. show was that the productivity gains are going to free up time, mm. not just to do more work, but also to do things on their own, but the societal impact is also a user experience, yeah. mm. and as the, as, the, as the table stakes raises higher and abstracts away the complexity, mm. we're going to see more change. So mm. a lot of people are doing more transformational things, not just business transformation, but yeah. it's enabling a lot of other things. So I have to ask how you guys are building your platform. What is the approach? 
Um, everyone's rethinking this engineering and with the data as the enabler, mm. I mean, it's kind of a disruptive enabler because if you have the data done right, the platform engineering side increases. So what are you guys actually building? Take us through the, 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 the story there. So, um, the, the essence is that we're building a unified platform. And when I say unified, it does not mean one size fits all. I mean, Samashima San talked about the diverse businesses and domains that the Hitachi Group is uh, in, right? So it's not a one size fits all platform. What it essentially is, is a set of foundational assets and capabilities that enable responsible, reliable, reusable implementation of Gen AI across the enterprise. I mean, each of these three words have very deep meaning and connotation. Uh, it ranges from everything from creating foundational assets from data ingestion and curation, model selection, training, and customization, as well as you know, capabilities around security, governance, and trust, which are acutely important for an enterprise. Which is why we've actually coined a term for this. We're calling this the platform of platforms. And we truly believe this is a next generation, first of a kind, platform of platforms to drive Gen AI across a very large enterprise like Hitachi. Explain that real quick. What is a platform of platform? How do you, what does that mean from a definition standpoint? How would you define platform of platforms? Platforms integrating with each other, platforms on top of each other. What is that, could you like just quickly give a quick overview what platform Look, let me, of Look, let me try and explain that uh, by the uh, analogy of perhaps a three-layered cake. Yeah. Like, which is kind of the architecture that we're following for uh, this platform of platforms approach. At the core foundational level, if you can think about infrastructure, we're leveraging Hitachi Ventara's hybrid cloud capabilities around reliability and observability to make sure that the platform is secure and reliable. We've also built capabilities and assets on top of that around security, governance, and trust. I'd argue that nothing is more important for Hitachi and perhaps for any enterprise than trust. And with the advent of generative AI, you also have uh, the dawn of a whole bunch of threat vectors. Mm -hmm. uh, never heard of these terms before. Things okay. like malicious prompts that can compromise intellectual property, data poisoning, uh, potentially model drift uh, that can actually give you uh, results that can compromise the trust of the company. So it's a lot about creating these foundational assets that ensure that people like Samashima San and I and many other executives are actually sleeping well at night. <laughs> right, so that's at the foundational level. Um, you know, you also have, you know, reusable and fit for purpose language models uh, that are powered by, yeah. you know, Google's Vertex AI. And also at the top layer, the right set of visualization and consumption capabilities that allow easy adoption of generative AI across the diverse set of companies. So that's really the core of what this platform of platforms approaches. And hence the engineering focus of what you guys do, because that's that's not that's not easy to pull off. I mean, it's like, it is. It's look, not it's, uh, it's not trivial. Look, I, I, <laughs> it's easier said than done. <laughs> that's all I'll say. And I think, but we are breaking new ground. And I'm sure Samishri yeah. Masan will talk more about the value that it brings to the Hitachi group of companies. But I actually wanted to ask you, uh, Samashima-san, before we get into that, to talk a little bit about what Srini was talking about earlier. Trust is paramount here. Mm. Um, and how are you addressing these governance challenges? Because um, security, governance, trust, th these, are, yeah. these are critical components. Yes, so as Hitachi, being responsible for the critical public infrastructure, we recognize the utmost significance of governance to General, um, guarantee the safe and the secure use of the AI in mission critical fields. In order to reinforce our commitment, we established a generative AI center last year, May, and gathering the data scientists, AI researchers, which has expertise on Gen AI, and uh, as well as the experts of, from IT, in-house IT, security, quality assurance, intellectual property and legal department. So based on our expertise and cultivated in the privacy and the AI ethics guidelines, and as well as the global legal and the regulatory trend, we have crafted a compre uh, comprehensive set of guidelines 
for the use of Gen AI in Hitachi's. And we are now developing the in-house environment to use Gen AI's. The entire Hitachi group is embracing the potential of Gen AI by using this guideline and the environment. And so, it is necessary to accumulate the practical knowledge when implementing Gen AI, so that's come down to the one more unified approach, as Srini said. Mm. So Srini, I want to talk about that, the, the trust piece coming into governance. She mentioned that the trust at the center, which sounds like the think tank, everyone, everyone gets together, talk about safety, guardrails, all that good stuff, and then how to apply it. But when we look at the scalability of having a unified platform, data has to be addressable. So the big hot area right now, that I mean, it's not really reported much in the press, but governance is hot. People are rethinking governance um, on how you build that in from the front end. Because if data's going to be flying around everywhere and being generated, <laughs> you got to know the governance. Can you just share some insights on how you're thinking about the governance piece? Because the three layer cake, to make that work, you got to have a robust governance model. What's the governance strategy? What do you guys do differently? What's the new best practice? Is there a pro tip on governance that you've seen? Look, I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm sure Samishi Masam will speak more about how we're instituting governance within the Hitachi group, uh, but it's really about ensuring that, you know, that the core of it, it's a lot about data. So when you look at data ingestion, you've got to look at the entire data supply chain and ensure there's safety and security and you're able to govern not just the data that's within the four walls of your enterprise, but also the entire you know, supply chain of data. So that's really critical. Uh, we obviously are you know, creating a library of fit for, fit for purpose models, large language models, that va serve various use cases from conversational AI to field service, to knowledge sharing and retrieval, to content generation. And it's really important that you have the right governance mechanisms to determine things like accuracy. Yeah. Uh, especially given that these models are non-deterministic. So what is the right level of accuracy to make sure that you can put your trust of the company behind it. Uh, to make sure that you don't have model drift. Yeah. Uh, to make sure that it's grounded in accuracy and yeah. it's grounded in relevance and gr it's grounded in currency. So there's just a lot of foundational elements that you have to put in place to address a lot of that. And I think from an organization standpoint, you know, Samashi Masan can cover some of the aspects of how do you make sure organizationally we are set up to do that well. By the way, before he, before he gets on there, yesterday Thomas Curry had said in his keynote, they're grounding with Google search, that's the Google Vertex side and, and Gemini side, but he said ground in the enterprise truth. So the grounding with the data becomes a huge deal in, on that piece there, so uh, that is awesome. Awesome piece so, there, yeah. So uh, as, as Srini mentioned, the governance of data is a very important point to protect the data or to assure the correctness of data or something. However, another approach is a kind of the architectural or structural approach. One of the hint is in the in public infrastructure system. In the control system of public infrastructure, there is a concept named protection control that protects the uh, equipment or system independent of the computer system or something. Uh, in another word, the guardrail, the word guardrail is used in the AI context. So this kind of the structural scheme is also important, I think. Can you talk a little bit about where Google Cloud comes into this collaboration between Global Cloudic and Hitachi? Well, I believe that Google Cloud is a fast growing cloud. And uh, uh, we, Hitachi, as a solution provider, we expect Google Cloud to provide the cloud platform and especially the Gen AI, uh, general purpose LLM models yeah. like Gemini or something. Srin, do you have anything? No, I think, look, uh, to answer that question, I have to say, where do I begin? <laughs> 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 uh, we're obviously leveraging, uh, as I said, fit for purpose, you know, platforms yeah. and capabilities that Google Cloud offers like Vertex AI and Gemini Pro. Uh, we are actually starting to also understand which models serve what needs better. So we have a real strong point of view around what's good for legacy modernization, what's good for conversational AI. Um, so yeah, we're really looking to leverage uh, the best that the foundational yeah. stack that Google Cloud can offer to actually power up 
the full suite of that three-layered kick, if you will. Well, I mean, yesterday they talked about the first party, third party open source models, which are all now 130 in Vertex. But also they had built on the model guard, and they got the model builders, and they got the agent builders. So you're starting to see agents come in. Um, so a lot more exciting things are coming. I guess my question would be for you guys is that, what have you learned in your project as you guys are engineering this platform of platforms? What's the key takeaways that you guys could share for folks watching that's, that are thinking, hey, I, have to, I, want to, I want the bridge to the future, but I got to build it, I got to engineer it. What learnings are coming out of your work? I mean, you guys were doing this before ChatGPT was launched. So as <laughs> pre-launch <laughs> pre and now as you're in it, what is the key learnings? Could you share anecdotal things or anything that's not proprietary so, uh, so, learnings? You know, just the key takeaways, right? So you're right in saying that we were, I mean, this is not new for us. Yeah. We've actually, uh, for many years, we've been serving our clients in terms of training their LLMs. That's actually a service offering that we offer. We actually train LLMs on data and specific yeah. domains for our clients. So we've got experience prior to the advent of ChatGPT. Look, uh, I think the key takeaway uh, for me is 2023, was the year of experimental proof points. 2024 is the year where the industry is going to transition and transcend from experimental proof points to enter enterprise grade scalable AI that's fit for the enterprise. Um, and I think I'm delighted and proud that Global Logic and Hitachi are leading the way on that journey. Yeah. We're breaking new ground, we're going to be learning new things. Um, you know, the pace of this is so fast that every yeah. two weeks, uh, I feel that I'm outdated. <laughs> um, New papers are hitting the market. <laughs> Reading uh, papers on the weekend, uh, another paper but, you got to read. But, 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 but I will yeah. say that um, we're out there breaking new ground and yeah. stay tuned for more. It's great work and I think it's right, on, it's right in line where the market is now because it is an engineering thing now. It's becoming back to less IT transformation. It's really software engineering transformation. Uh, and we're seeing that impact the data levels. I like the platform and platforms because this is what we've been talking about. This is a whole nother level and it's super exciting. Is there, an, is, there, is there anything you'd like to share to the folks watching around, advice you'd give them as they go on their journeys, as they think about their platform to build? Folks who are out there watching now saying, hey, I want to do this too. What, was, what advice would you give them? Um, I, okay, let me start. I, I would say that um, you have to look at the foundational stack. Uh, because for any enterprise, uh, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, it's great to say that let every flower bloom, and so you don't want to kind of uh, centralize things that actually uh, limit innovation, but you have to do that to democratize AI, you have to create a set of foundational capabilities that truly then allow every flower to bloom. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what we're looking at doing. We're not going to be very prescriptive about how they use our platform, yeah. but it's like serving them a set of foundational capabilities that allow yeah. them to be secure, yeah. uh, that allow trust for the data, that allow them the choice of multiple models in a fit for yeah. purpose way. You talked about the agents. We give them a palais of agents yeah. that allow them flexibility around consumption models. So that's what, that's, that's can, the whole thing let them build a, Let them build their own yep. house. Absolutely, and it's about not yeah. making sure that we don't reinvent the wheel. <laughs> right, exactly, no, those are so important. So, now that we've discussed how you actually build the technology, how you're architecting it, what are you using it for? And as a future of work journalist, I'm interested on the impact in your, in your, on your business, but also on your workforce too, and, and how, um, how, pe how, your, how your team is interacting with it. Well, I think the possibility are extensible as the um, progress of technologies. Our initial focus is on elevating the productivity by automating tasks and enhancing the efficiency by fine tuning the process and growing the revenue by unlocking the entirely new capabilities. A recent study of consulting firm said that the total economic potential is more than 2.6 or 4.4 trillion dollars, more than the GDP of United Kingdom. So this is, however, merely the dawn of the new era. So we aim to unleash the potential of Gen AI to achieve the social innovation. 
One of the things that was really striking when we started talking about Hitachi was this real overarching mission to help society and to create innovations that help humankind. Um, how much does that infiltrate your workforce in the sense of the mission that they're working toward and using Gen AI to, to solve some of these big societal problems um, as well as you, as you were talking about the, the demographic cliff that we have with, with the workforce itself? Mm. Yes, um, you know, societal issue is one of the important areas we need to address and something, and the Gen AI has a strong potential to solve such kind of the issue. However, we do not rely on too much on technology itself. We humankind should improve ourselves to, so that we can determine which is a better answer or which is a better way to go by ourselves. So this is then a core evolution of human and technology, I think. Excellent. Well, both of you seem so positive and bullish about this collaboration. I want you to look into your crystal balls and just talk a little bit about what, you, what we might be talking about at next year's Google Cloud Next, what you're most exciting, excited about come in the coming year. Srini, do you want to start with you? Look, um, nobody has a real crystal ball, I can tell you that, right? I mean, just think about it, two years back, I know. You know, if we were having this conversation, the audience would be like, no what are these guys talking about? Right? <laughs> what are they talking about? I mean, they wouldn't even understand the, the lingo here that we're talking about, right? So it's really hard to say what's going to, what's the shape of things to come. But I will say this, um, that, look, if you go back to prior revolutions, yeah. you had the industrial revolution. Yeah. It actually created a 10X, if not a 100X, jump in per capita GDP because it essentially drove us a significant acceleration in horsepower, literally, right? Basically GDP and productivity is a function of how many horses you had. <laughs> we're, I mean, we have not seen anything like this before. I mean, yeah. we're seeing an acceleration of intelligence, mm -hmm. right? And it's going to be another 10x multiplier in terms of GDP, yeah. you know, per capita productivity, if you will. Um, and we're not even talking about the age of AGI, which is artificial general intelligence. So I think it'll be supremely empowering. It'll absolutely create new categories. It'll allow us to free our um, you know, time to do less mundane work and really do a lot more creative work. And uh, look, I'm really excited about the human in the loop. Yeah, yeah. Because the human in the loop in the future yeah. is going to be a lot more intelligent and empowered than the yeah. human in the loop today. Creativity is going to be yeah. off, off the charts. Yes, yes, and also just the yeah. time to yeah. to live in the world and be with our I families. Mean, you got a great, pets. you got a great beat future I do. work. I, I mean, do it's indeed. changing. I do indeed. <laughs> I do indeed. <laughs> Sashima Srini, thank you both so much for coming on the Cuba. Great, great conversation. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We enjoyed it. Thank you yes. very much. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. Stay tuned for more of the Cube's live coverage of Google Cloud Next. You are watching the Cube, the leading source for enterprise news.